Hey y'all, this is Audra Hicks with Simply Home, your Tennessee realtor. Today I wanted to go over the steps to take to prepare to buy a home. So stay tuned because I put the real in real estate. So I've gathered uh, some steps that you can take to ensure the careful planning of buying a home. Um, preparing to buy a home is a significant step that involves careful planning and consideration. Here are some essential things a buyer can do to get ready for this important purchase. So, so there's a lot of steps that you can do ahead of time um, that will go a long way in preparing to buy a home. Now, also, if you... Uh, don't know for sure if you can it's always great to get the advice of a trusted real estate professional in your area if you're here in Tennessee where I am I would be happy to help you um, and uh, so first you want to assess your finances um, you want to assess your finances so evaluate your financial health by reviewing your savings income expenses and debts and this will help you understand how much you can afford in a house so say Say you've wrote down all of your outgoing expenses and your bud you've done your budget and you know what you can afford in a house payment. You, if you're renting, you kind of know what your rent is and can you can you afford five hundred more dollars on that or do you need to stay at say the fifteen hundred dollar mark? Um, can you afford a twenty five hundred dollar note? You need to know all of that and uh, figure that part out on you know. Can you afford to do that and still live um, and buy food and things like that and gas? Um, so it's always a good thing to have that knowledge before you um, get pre-approved. But the pre-approval process will let you know what you are approved for. And your lender needs to tell you, hey, here's how much your approximate payment will be. But you're going to have principal and interest. And then you're going to have escrows which is your property taxes and insurance as well that you'll have to pay in your house note once a month so if you have a budget of say seventeen hundred dollars a month and let's say fifteen hundred of it is principal and interest and then two hundred is all you can spend in your property taxes and insurance you kind of need to stay in those margins now can you go over by fifty dollars i don't know that's something you would need to know at that point do you have flex room in where you want to be is that where you would like to be comfortably or can you actually uh, if you found the right house know that you can spend X amount over or do you need to stay firmly in that budget and I like to know that because I don't want I don't ever want to set you up for a fall or have you do anything that you can't afford to do um, life happens too so um, so assess your finances, do that. Um, if you know your credit score, you might want to check your credit score. Some, uh, sometimes the um, things that you check are not always accurate. Um, so when a mortgage lender pulls your credit, sometimes I've seen uh, some of the apps that people have used come in a lot lower credit score than what it really is and we're shocked. Or I've seen it come in a lot higher than what it really is and then we're still shocked you know so um knowing that and obtain your credit report you need to check for accuracies and improve your credit score if necessary now i have great lenders that can pull it and if there is something on there that's keeping your credit score down and say you need a 620 to buy a home or to get you know better rates or whatever the higher the score usually the better rates that you'll get um, anyway, so um, if it's like a 618 and you need two more uh, digits to draw uh, to make you go up to a 620, sometimes there's something on your credit that can get uh, resolved pretty quickly and they can rescore you and say it might go from a 618 up to a 670. You know, they have ways of telling you that and knowing exactly what it's going to be or should be once you do that. Uh, I have some right now that I'm working with that um, on her credit, there is something on there that should have never, ever been there. Um, she didn't know it or anything. So getting that off there and then we're going shopping. 
um, and it's going to improve her credit score tremendously. Um, so save for down payment, even if you go for, um, there are options that are zero down payments. But up front, I always tell my clients that, hey, it would be great if you had X amount up front because we're going to have to put down, um, uh, you're going to have to have your home inspection. You're going to do a termite inspection usually. Um, you know, some upfront cost. You need earnest money when you go put an offer in on a home. Um, whether it be five hundred or a thousand dollars, or it's a percentage of um, the home, um, it could be a couple of thousand dollars. So you're going to need to have some reserves for that kind of thing. Um, and um, um, so the down payment, you have different government loans that are zero down, uh, down payment assistant type loans. Um, some can help you pay your closing costs too because you have down payment. Um, you know, I've, I've said in different videos, I think about the different types of loans and some are anywhere from three and a half percent down to five percent um, or up to 20 percent down. So if you don't do one of those loans, then uh, there are other options um, out there for zero down. And sometimes it helps in closing cost, uh, so much toward closing cost. And if uh, we're in the market we're in today, sometimes um, if you have a savvy realtor that can do an offer and try to get you closing cost in there, then um, that would be a great thing to do, especially in this market, to have the seller pay closing cost. Um, you can always do that. Depends on the market, depends on the situation, depends on the seller, what they're willing to do and everything. But that's part of negotiating too. So um, so it's always good to have some for down payment. Now I've had buyers that have zero, like they're living paycheck to paycheck, but they can afford to buy a house, but up front, their life has happened and they don't, all their savings is not there or their savings is gonna be there in a few weeks or before closing. Who knows? Everybody's situation's different, um, so you just never know. Some buyers already have 30 grand in a bank account ready to do whatever. Uh, some buyers just are, you know, living paycheck to paycheck, but instead of renting, they want to buy. And they can do that as long as, you know, it works out for them and uh, it works out in their favor. Um, so you'll want to get pre-approved for a mortgage. Um, I'll, a lot of my clients come to me first and then I have different vendors that um, I have built relationships with that I know and trust that are going to get my clients to the end. So if they tell us and give us a green light that you can go shopping and um, we go shopping, I know that unless my client goes out and starts buying stuff or uh, hurting their credit that we're going to go to closing. Um, but you can use whoever you want to, um, and if you already have your own lender, then I would get pre-approved. My, I have lenders that can pull your credit, help figure out what you need to do if your credit score isn't where it needs to be and how long it's going to take us to get there. Um, and also say you're at a 618 and you need to be at a 620 for this loan. Uh, but if you just paid this one thing off, it's going to jump it up 50 points. So, um, you know, there's avenues of, of figuring that out with the right lenders that can do that for you. Um, but a pre-approval gives you a clear idea of what you can afford and shows sellers that you are a serious and qualified buyer when we can provide that pre-approval letter to them with our offers. Um, so, um, research potential neighborhoods. You'll want to do that ahead of time. Um, so you can investigate different areas to find a neighborhood that suits your lifestyle, considering factors like schools, commute times uh, from where you want to be or where you work, community, and amenities. Um, is it something that you want to be in um, near Nashville or do you want to be within an hour of Nashville? You need to kind of figure that out. Some clients want to be within 45 minutes of Nashville, but they have um, their kids go to Vanderbilt for, you know, health issues and stuff, so they need to be near there. Or some, some need to be near Music Row once or twice a week. So, it, <coughs> excuse me, 
whatever it is that you're going to want to to do and your family does for their lifestyle um where you think in mind where you like to eat play where you work uh, where you shop and all of that and figure out where you kind of want to be now do you want to be in a close-knit neighborhood where all the homes are kind of close together um and you know they a big community involvement and stuff uh, do you want to be in an HOA, which is Homeowners Association, or do you not want everybody to tell you what to do, uh, basically? And, um, or do you want to be in a rural area? Do you want an acre? I go over all this in my buyer's consultations. I love to sit down with my buyers. Sometimes it takes an hour. Sometimes my clients are there uh, for three or four uh, just wanting to know the whole process from start to finish and questions and we're having fun. So that's what it's all about. Trying to get to know each other and know if we're going to work good together, see what kind of communication we have, what kind of rapport we have. So that's our time to figure out if either of us are going to work good together or two and, uh, what we need, what our expectations are of each other as well, um, during the process. But I'm there to guide you, have your best interest at heart. Uh, walk you through the whole process from start to finish and uh, most of my clients know I'm their concierge for life so they will ask me everything even if it's a lender question they usually come to me first um, so but I appreciate that and it makes my heart happy knowing that they trust me so um, and I wouldn't do anything to hurt the trust of my clients either so um, so getting pre-approved doing the potential neighborhoods um, Determine your needs and wants because I do a top nine list. So I have uh, uh, your must-haves, your want-to-haves, and your like-to-haves. Three of each. So if you come prepared already, that's great. Uh, some already do. Um, most people don't know I'm going to do that. But some already have it written down and figured out. Um, and uh, so determine, make your list. Make a list of what you need in a home versus what you want in a home. So your must-have list is going to be your your need list. Um, this helps prioritize and make decisions during your search. Helps me as the agent to know what type of house we need to go look for. Do you need? Do you have to have an updated home? Can, do you care if it's been updated? Do you need granite countertops? Uh, do you need three bedrooms versus four, or four versus three? Do you need? Uh, are you okay with a two-bedroom house? Do you need it to be on an acre? Does it have to be brick, all brick, or siding? I mean, all kinds of things. Does it have to have a deck already? And if you need a fence, isn't it something that you can budget for and get a fence once you get it? You know, we go over all types of things so that we know kind of what you're looking for. And it's funny because the top nine list sometimes comes into play when they go shopping and they... They buy something totally opposite of what they've told me they wanted. And I'm like, I thought you wanted this. And they're like, oh, I know, but I just love this home in this neighborhood and I want this one. You never know until you get there. Everything's going to change. Um, and you know the home usually when you arrive. I've had them pull up to homes and say, oh, I hate this outside. And I'm like, let's not even go in. Uh, some are like, oh, I just want to see the inside. And they still hate it. And I'm like, we just wasted 30 minutes of our time in here. We could have went to the next one then. <laughs> so if you hate it on the outside, you're probably not going to want the like it on the inside either. And if you do like it on the inside, the outside is like a, a, a no-go. So, um, you know, you kind of know when you pull up. I've had them pull up and cry, and I'm crying with them. So <laughs> I just, and, and I've had them where I pulled up, we've pulled up, and, and I tell my hubby, oh, this is going to be the one. And I, they've gotten out of their cars and said, started crying and said, this is it. And I'm like, oh, I know, I know, this is it. So it's just an emotional process for all of us involved anyway. Um, so um, now you need to also understand the market. Familiarize yourself with the current real estate market trends. Are you in a buyer's or a seller's market? This knowledge will help in negotiations and expectations. Now that's really nothing that you would, most buyers don't know that. A lot of them do. A lot of them are savvy already and, and know what we mean by that. If you're in a multiple offer situation in almost every house you go into, then that's going to be 
a red flag that it's a seller's market they can get what they want for that house no matter what so you might have to offer over and above and i've had clients do that now i've really asked them if they really want to do that or not because i don't want you to overpay for a home i would never put you in that situation but some have really wanted the home and and wanted to do it had the money to do it but then most of them it's like no i really don't want to so we'll go on to the next one you know but there there's a home out there for everyone that may not be the home for you. So in that type of market, I try to get them to not expect a lot. Uh, try not to get your hopes up on every, you know, on a house because they may not accept ours if they have 20 other offers already and they might have a different, you know, they might be a conventional loan versus FHA or they might have all cash versus your lending. You know, you never know, but I will put my best foot forward and we're going to write the best kind of offer that we can for their current, my current buyer in their situation, because I do not want them to get in a home that they can't afford or they don't feel good about doing either. So, um, I have your best interest at heart always. Um, so, uh, understanding the market, your, your agent, your realtor is going to know or should know what the market is like. Um, if they don't, I would be shocked. Um, so, so um, educate yourself about the home buying process. But that's what my buyer's uh, consultation is for. I uh, will tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly. We're going to go over a lot of things that um, you need to know during the buying process. And in a previous video, I know I've um, told you the do not do list. Um, look that video up there's a do not do while you are you are buying a home and I actually make my clients I go over it with them and I have them initial that page or sign that page because I don't I want them to know that they've read it I give a copy of everything that my clients uh, have in the buyers uh, consultation and send it home in an envelope with them or a um, you know a folder with them so that way they have it and they can pull it out and refer to it and uh if they go out and buy a car when i told them not to do that then i'm like oh no i told you that didn't i <laughs> so no we have fun in there um when we um have our buyers consultations i try to make it as fun as possible i mean it's already stressful enough buying a home and i want to kind of ease that tension um of buying a home but that's what i'm there for is to take a lot of the stress away so it's still gonna be stressful no matter what for all of us involved um so uh, understanding each step making uh, from making an offer to closing reduces stress and helps you make informed decisions yes it does um prepare uh, prepare for additional costs be aware of additional costs such as closing costs home inspections moving expenses and home maintenance costs now when you are buying a home you're going to have your home inspection termite inspection usually um, you're going to need your earnest money, um, which is going to be you're in good faith that you're showing that you really want that house and X amount of money is going to be put, you know, sent to the title company for, um, you know, should you, um, go into this and want to buy this home, you're going to need to put down earnest money. It depends on, uh, the price point of the home and the situation and all that you and your agent would figure out what the best um, figure for earnest money would be um, for you so um, it's always good to have money uh, for expenses and things like that set aside now um, you know there are like I've said um, different government loans that are zero down some will help you with the closing costs. Some we have to see if the seller can pay if my client does not have the proper funds for closing costs on top of everything that they're doing. So um, that I try to get in my buyer's consultation, figure all that out so I know how we can proceed and put our best foot forward when we're writing offers and know that if my client needs to pay their own closing or if the seller uh, is going to hopefully help do that. So we strategically write offers in order to um, hopefully get that all put in there. Um, and then be flexible and patient. Now I have to be patient all the time. And uh, and they say I have the patience of Job. So um, the home buying process can take time. Be prepared to make compromises and be patient while searching for your perfect home. Um, 
most of the time it's within uh, now it depends on if you're an investor and you're closing quickly in a few days or a week and all cash or you're gonna um, you are getting lending and it depends on the type of loan so usually 30 days uh, from the time we find the home, put the offer in, get the home inspections, the lending process, go forward, get the insurance, do all this stuff. There's a lot involved in the beginning and the end. So from the time of that to closing is 30 days, usually 40, uh, up to 45 days or so. Um, so it can be a quick, a quick process. Uh, sometimes it might be a little bit more of a process depends on you know the every situation every buyer's different every seller's different uh, everybody's different um, so um, you just got to have patience and uh, know that I'm gonna be there for you if I am your agent as well so stay informed and ask questions never hesitate to ask questions whether you whether to your real estate agent lender or others involved in the process staying informed is key to a successful home purchase I think communication and staying informed is key to a successful home purchase. Um, many times I have either a husband and wife or boyfriend and girlfriend or just ones that want to share a home and they're both buying a home. You just never know. Um, or if mom and dad's helping. If everybody's in agreement to be in the same shared text message, um, then we'll do a group text too so everybody's informed of what is going on um, I I'm very communicative I love to um, let my clients know every step of the way there's some that don't want to know anything <laughs> not many but there are some that want over communication so um, with me you're gonna get that um, but I have to find the right kind of communication for each client. Some love text, some love phone calls, some love both, some love emails. It just, you never know. Some want to come, you got to see them in person. So um, you've got to figure that out. And usually in the buyer's consultation or my listing consultations, we figure all that out ahead of time and see what everybody, everybody's on the same page with everything. Um, and uh, communication is key. We've got to know every step of the way. My clients know that I'm their concierge for life, so they usually are telling me everything, even asking me stuff that it might be a lender question. And I will let them know, hey, I'm going to ask said lender or I'm going to ask the title company or, you know, we're going to figure this out or I already know it, but I just really would like for, um, uh, you know, me to get somebody else involved in certain things so usually I can answer whatever it is anyway but if I don't know I will seek whoever I need to uh, to find for the answers uh, to different questions so um, you know for that taking these steps can help ensure a smoother more successful home buying experience uh, so I thought I would just share a lot of this with you today um, if you find my video useful Please like and subscribe and share with your friends and family. Um, and uh, y'all have a great day and I will see y'all next time. So stay tuned. Thanks so much. Bye y'all.